Hi everyone, and welcome to the revision of Chapter 9, Application of International Trade. Given the current reality of trade wars, this should be a very interesting topic that will help you to form a better understanding of several international processes. Today we will speak about four core concepts. First, the equilibrium without trade and world price. Next, winners and losers from trade. We will discuss the cases of exporting countries and importing countries separately. And last but not least, we will discuss the effects of a tariff. Let us start with equilibrium without trade. So what we have here is our market in equilibrium and with its total surplus, which consists of producer surplus and consumer surplus and equilibrium price, obviously. So before proceeding to our next point, we should learn one concept, which is world price. The world price is the price of a good that prevails in the world market for that good. Now, let's think what will happen if this market, market in equilibrium, will engage in international trade. Let's observe two scenarios. The first, if the world price of a good is higher than the domestic price, then the country will export goods once trade is permitted. And the second scenario, if the world price of a good is lower than the domestic price, then the country will import goods once trade is permitted. Next, let's try to understand who are winners and who are losers from trade in each of these situations. Let's firstly consider the case of exporting country. So, here we have our market, again, in equilibrium. Let's say that the country discovers that the world price is actually higher than the local price and thus engages in export activities. As you can see, the total surplus will increase by the section which represents exports, the section D in our case. However, let us understand how each of the sites in the market will be affected by these exporting activities. So let us calculate the surpluses, firstly before the trade and after the trade and compare those together. First, before trade, consumer surplus was equal to A plus B, or the blue region under the demand curve. Producer surplus was equal to C, and the total surplus was sum of these two surpluses. So what happened after exports? After trade, consumer surplus decreased to A only. Producer surplus increased instead, and now it consists of B, C, and the D part, which represents exports. And total surplus now is A plus B plus C plus D, all the regions under the curves. Now, what's the change? Let's compare it to situations. So consumer sur surplus actually decreased. Producer surplus increased by B and D sections. And total surplus increased by D. So, here are our conclusions. In, co in case of exporting countries, country in general will benefit from trade because the total surplus will increase. And as you remember, as we have discussed in previous chapters, the total surplus has a connection with total well-being of the society. Now, at the same time, Consumer surplus will decrease, which means that consumers will be losers in this scenario. They will lose. And producers will actually win because producer surplus increases. 
So the logical way of thinking why consumers lose here is because the price of the good products or services will increase to the point of world price. And thus, the consumers will lose this part due to the price increase. Now let us discuss the second scenario of importing country. Again, we have our market in equilibrium with consumer and producer surpluses. So all of a sudden the country engages into international trade and discovers that the world price is actually lower than the local price. And the country decides to engage into importing activities. And here is the change of total surplus. Again, as in previous case, let us firstly calculate the situation before trade, then after trade, and let's compare the two situations. So consumer surplus, as you can see, before trade was represented by section A only. The producer surplus consisted of B and C, and the total surplus was the sum of these two. Now, after the trade, consumer surplus actually increased and now is represented by A, B and B. Producer surplus decreased from B and C to C only. And the total surplus is now represented by all the four regions together. What's the change? So consumer surplus increased by B and D, producer lost the B section, and the total surplus increased by D. The conclusion is simple. So in case of importing countries, the total surplus increases and thus the society in general benefits from trade in case of importing countries as well. Consumer surplus increases which means consumers are winners. But producer surplus decreases and thus producers lose from international trade and from importing activities. Again, the logic behind these calculations is very simple. Due to entrance to the market of cheaper products, given that the world price was less than the local price, consumers can afford more of these products or more consumers can afford these products. And some of the local producers are out of business because of being non-competitive. So finally, let's discuss the effects of tariffs. But before that, let's define tariff. A tariff is a tax on goods produced abroad and sold domestically. It's important to keep in mind that although in this chapter we'll focus on tariffs only, in a reality in international trade, non-tariff regulations play very important role. So if you are interested in that, you can Google or write in the comments and I will prepare another video about non-tariff regulations and effects on the trade. But returning to our topic, as we have already defined tariff, let's try to understand the effects graphically. So again, let's say we have our market, consumer producer surpluses, and let's say that our market is importing market because the world price is lower than the local price. So, all of a sudden, the government decides to impose tariffs on particular products which are imported. So what happens in the market? The price for these goods increases by the amount of tariff. And now, as you can see, we have a couple of more sections to discuss. Again, as in previous cases, let us discuss the situation. Firstly, calculating surpluses before the effects of tariff. 
then after the effects of tariff and compare the two situations. So firstly, before the tariff, the consumer surplus was represented by A, B, C, D, E and F. These are the sections that we have discussed already, the consumer surplus in case of importing country. Now, producer surplus before the tariff was represented by the section G only. In this case, we will also add another portion of total surplus, which is a government revenue, which before tariff was zero. And the total surplus in this case was equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus only. Now, after the tariff, as you can see, the consumer surplus decreased tremendously and is now represented by A and B only. Producer surplus increased by the section of C. And now we have a new component, E, which is the government revenue. And the total surplus, as you can see in this case, is equal to A, B, C, E, and G. So let's compare these two. As you can see, consumer surplus decreased tremendously by C, D, E, and F. Producer surplus actually increased slightly. And now we have a new portion, government revenue which was zero and now is represented by something. So we have an increase in this point. But the total surplus actually decreased by the sections of D and F. So what are conclusions? Tariffs are a good tool for generating government revenue, firstly. Secondly, this is a tool which helps to boost local producers slightly but at the same time due to the effects of tariffs consumer surplus decreases and consumers lose in this scenario and it's also important to understand that total surplus also will decrease and thus the society in general will lose you can think of how these models may change in case of different elasticities of supply and demand. But in general, the rule is that total surplus will be decreased by these two sections represented here by D and F. This was not covered in our chapter, but I want to mention that throughout this book, throughout these chapters, we came to a conclusion that engaging in a trade from the perspective of a total surplus is a positive activity which has a positive effect on the total surplus and thus social well-being and tariffs are not a good solution because those decrease the total surplus however it's important to remember that these cases are about fair trade situations only and countries can use a number of tools to deviate from this ideal scenario one was i've already mentioned non-tariff regulations or subsidies to local producers and the other point is that some countries may actually use trade as a political tool so when thinking about these models, you should keep in mind that there are certain situations which will deviate from our models. And if you are interested in these situations, again, you can write in the comments and I can prepare a separate video about this. So that's it. This was the revision of Chapter 9, Application of International Trade. Thank you, I hope it was useful, and as always, please like and subscribe.